And there we go. All right, so we're into 14.2. We're into statistics. So I'm going to try to, we're supposed to do our practice exam on Monday, right? Man, I don't know if we're going to finish it. So, all right, so we got a fair bit to go. Hope you're feeling alert this afternoon. Wait, all right. on Monday? 14.2, here we go. So, they give you a data set, and they said find the average, the median, and then they change it. Okay, you guys know how to find average, right? How do you find the average of a bunch of numbers? Add them up and divide by how many, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so the average of this data set, you're just going to um, add them up. And so for average, and divide by the number of numbers. We always call that N in all these statistics forms, is the number of numbers. So, yeah, you guys have your calculator? Oh, I've already done it, huh? So can you get that? Can, can you get that answer? Minus 1.875? Just add up those numbers, the 6.9, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Just add those up on your calculator. And then divide by, how many numbers is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Divide by 8. Add them up and divide by 8. And you should get that average. I'll move on to median. If you have any trouble with that, grab me after class. Median. How do we do median? Does anybody know median? It's kind of like an average. It's another kind of an average. It's where you put them in order. So let me, if you got that one down, I'm going to write the instructions right here for median. So for median, you first, step one, put in order lowest to highest. So you, you first got to put the orders, the number, numbers in order, lowest to highest. And the number two, if for an odd, odd amount, one number in the middle, or the median, the median equals middle number. For an even amount, for an even amount, the median The median equals two middle number average. Two middle numbers average. Do you know what I mean by that? If you, if we have a middle finger, right? I'm, I'm not. I'm going to be crass now. I'm not really going to be crass. But we have a middle finger only because we have an odd number of fingers. You'll remember it this way, right? You'll never forget. Because we have five fingers, there is one in the middle. If we only had four fingers, if we had an even amount of fingers, we would not have a middle finger, we would have two in the middle, wouldn't we? So that's what I'm saying. If you have an odd amount of things, then there's one in the middle. Grab that middle one, that's the median. If you have an even amount of things, there's not one in the middle, there's two in the middle, average those two. That's the median. Does that make sense? So you just have to put the numbers in order from lowest to highest. So let's do that. Let me get this out of the way and we'll try to do that up here. So let's put them in order from lowest to highest and then we'll grab the uh, one in the middle, or two, if there's two in the middle. So which one among all those numbers, which one's the, among these numbers right here, which one's the lowest, the most negative? That, that 11.4, right? Minus 11.4, that'd be the first one, that'd be the lowest one. Which one comes next? Yeah, it looks like both the negative 3.2s all right, now putting them in order from lowest to highest, right? Lowest to highest. Okay, what comes next? 1.7. Yeah, the negative 1.7s, both the negative 1.7s. Next. What's next? 0.6. Yeah, the negative 0 0.6 and then the negative... The negative 0 0.1, right? And finally, the only positive number, the 6.9. So there's the numbers put in order from lowest to highest. All right, now how many numbers do we have? Because I want to find out if there's one number in the middle or are there two numbers in the middle. How many numbers do we have? Eight. Yeah, eight. N equals eight numbers. 
So that means there's two in the middle, right? If we had eight fingers, we would not have a middle finger. We would have two in the middle, right? So what are the two in the middle? Can you tell just kind of by looking? Yeah, it's these two. These are the middle, aren't they? Well, how do you know? Because there's three above them and three below them. They're in the middle. And so the median is the average of those two middle numbers. So you take the, how do you average two numbers? If you had an 80 and a 90 on two exams, how would you figure out your average? Add them and divide by two. Add them and divide by two, huh? So we're supposed to average those two middle numbers. Of course, that's going to be silly. They're the same number. So their average is just going to be themselves, negative 1.7. And we can do it to be, to be thorough. But, yeah, it's going to be negative 3.4 divided by 2, negative 1.7. That is the median. That's, that's a way of finding the middle, the average. It's another kind of average. They're both technically kinds of averages. A lot of people in the statistics world call this first kind of average we did, they technically call it the mean. It's called where you add them up and divide. That's called the mean. And the one we just did is the median. It's the one in the middle, or the two numbers in the middle of the data set. So this is two different ways to find the average. Now, why are we doing this again? Remember what this chapter is all about. How do you know something about a whole bunch of numbers at once? How can you, like, if, I, if you guys said to me, how did we do on the last test, Mr. Heron? I mean, like, as a whole class. Well, how can I tell you? I could read all the numbers, but that was a terrible way. I could show you pie charts or bar charts, and those are more helpful. Or I could just tell you the average, huh? A lot of times my, my students will ask me the average. My pre-calc students always ask me, what was the average on the test? I tell them 42. No, not that low. But, um, you know, they always ask me the average, and I tell them because they want to know the middle, so they have a feel for, like, how the whole class did, huh? So that's what an average is, is the middle of the whole data set. So it's a way of having a feel about all the numbers at once. It's a snapshot. It's a middle. It's middle. So anyway, there's a couple of ways to figure the middle, though. You can do the average, we call the mean, more technically, where you add them up and divide by how many numbers. Or you can do this new thing called the median. The median is another way to average. Is that making sense? So with the median, you don't add them all up and divide. You put them in order and grab the one or two in the middle. You might average the two in the middle, but that's all the adding you do for median. Is that good? And then they change the data set, right? So part C, they just change it, and then they ask you to do it again. So I guess we could do that. All right, let's go. Let's try part two. Or C. Let's do C. So C, they say the new average. So in C, they cut out one of the numbers. I don't know what number they cut out. Oh, the 11.4. It looks like they cut out the 11.4, didn't they? And so the new data set on part C has one less number. It only has seven numbers. And they're saying, all right, what's the average? You could add them up and divide. Let's do the median thing again. I just want to do that one. So if I was to do the new median, how would I figure the new median? Well, I'd have to put them in order. Remember, step one is put them in order from lowest to highest. So what's the lowest now? Can you tell what the lowest number is now with the new data set, which has one less number? the 3.2, huh? Both the 3.2s would come first and second, then the 1.7s, then the 0.6 and the 0.1, and finally the 6.9. So there we go, seven numbers. So if you have an odd amount of numbers, there's going to be only one in the middle now, huh? Which one is in the very middle? This one. Because there's three above him, three numbers above him, and three numbers below him. He's the middle, negative 1.7. That would be the median, which is the same median we got last time when we had two numbers in the middle. Good on that? That makes sense? See the difference between them? So average, you add them up and divide by how many numbers? Divide by 7. Median, you put them in order, grab the 1 or 2 in the middle. Wait, why do you divide by 7 again? Because the... that's the number of numbers. Whenever you do average, you add them all up and divide by the number of numbers. So in part C, we only have 7 numbers. Part A and B, we had eight numbers. They took one out. How do you know which one you take out? What's up? How do you know which one you take out? They, they gave me the new data set right here. Oh, okay, okay. Learn that. All right. 
All right. So let's try uh, part A. So we're doing them. These are like three different problems in one. Let's do part A. Part A has the numbers 3 through 12, as you can see. That's my data set. So first off, can you figure out the average? So that would be taking your calculator three, and add these all up, huh? Add them all up and then divide. Well, I'll just go I'll show it sideways. Add them all up, hit equals on your calculator, and then divide by however many numbers there are. How many numbers is that? Oh, e easy way. You know an easy way to figure out how many numbers from 3 to 12? Nine. You want to be careful, because a common mistake is to say 9. Because you're just thinking, well, 12 minus 3, it's 9. You know that's not right, though. Maybe you don't yet, but you will in a second. What? <laughs> how many numbers are missing? So we go 1 to 12, but we're missing 2, aren't we? So how many numbers are really there? Right? You go 1 to 12, but you're missing 2. There's actually 10 numbers, huh? If you count them, you'll see there's 10. Yeah, so watch out. It's a really common mistake to make. People say it all the time. They'll go, oh, I read. I hear it all the time. It's, you know, it doesn't really bug me, but it bugs me a little bit. People go, I read pages 73 through, 70 through 77. I read four pages. That's not four pages. They think it is. They go, yeah, you subtract them. It's four. And I always say, well, write them out. So three, seven, four, 75, 76. How many pages we got there? <laughs> not four pages. I, it's just a little math teacher irritation, I guess. But anyway, yeah, you don't subtract the numbers, right? It's, there's always one more than that is actually the range. So, um, yeah. So anyway, there we go on that. All right. Um, Okay, so divide. So you divide by how many numbers? There's ten numbers there. Yeah. So the easy way to not make that mistake, the easy way to not make that mistake is just say how many are missing. Two numbers are missing. How huh? one and two are missing. So twelve minus two must be ten numbers. Just count them yourself. Somebody get the number. Oh, it's right there, huh? Seven point five. Average is seven point five. And um, now let's find the median. How do we find the median? Well, for median you put them in order, but they already are in order. That's nice. They already are in, in order. Is there, for the median now, is there one or two numbers in the middle? Yeah, there's 10 numbers there, huh? So if you have 10 numbers, that's an even amount, there'll be two in the middle, won't there? Remember, if we, have an, if we had only four fingers, we would have two middle fingers, wouldn't we? If you have an even amount, you've always got two in the middle. So what are the two in the middle? Can you find the very two in the middle? Just start guessing. Like, maybe you'd say it's 6 and 7. That's not right. How do we know it's not 6 and 7? Because there's 5 above and only 3 below. So that's not the middle, huh? That's not the middle, too. So then you go, okay, okay, it's not that. Let me try again. Maybe it's 7 and 8. Is that right? 4 above, 4 below. That's right. See how we know? Just guess around until you can tell you've really got the middle there. So 7 and 8 are the middle. What do you do when you get two numbers in the middle for the median? You add them and divide by 2. You take the average of them. 7.5. That's how they got that answer. Does that make sense on that? And the rest is the same. Um, I'm going to skip on if you're okay with that. Mean and median or average and median. We can go slow on the harder ones. So here we go. This, this one often gets people on the test. It, it's always on the test, something like this, and it always, often gets people okay. Use the table on the right to find the average. So same kind of thing, we're finding the average and the median, but they're doing it by a table this time. They're doing it by a table, and this gets people sometimes. Any thoughts? How can we find the average and the median? Let's start with the average. How are we going to find the average? What, what do we got to do to do average of a bunch of numbers? Add them all up and divide, yeah. Well, is this table making any sense first off? Let's, let's talk about what this is. What does frequency mean? Often. Yeah, how often? How many, huh? Yeah. So, so this is like the results of some quiz. Score of zero, frequency four. What does that mean? That means four people got a zero. So if, you know what I'm going to suggest you do? It's just write them out. Zero, 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 zero. Four people got zeros. That's what that's saying, huh? Next, what does the 10, 16 thing mean? 
16 people got tens. So I'm going to write that out. I know that seems a little tedious, but I think it might be worth it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 people got tens. Next comes 14 people got 20s. So I'm going to write, I'm going to write that out. How many people? 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 people got 20s. And last, 6 people got 30s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's what the, that table is really saying. Huh? You don't have to write all that out if you're really good with tables. But my experience has been in teaching this course over the years that that's really helpful to students because sometimes the table is, is hard to work with and actually writing them out can be helpful. So the table is meaning that. It's meaning all those numbers displayed like that. Okay. So four zeros, 16 10s, 14 20s, and 6 30s. Now, let's go through it. Use the table to find the average. Now, how can we find the average? Well, we've got to add them all up and divide by how many numbers. But can we do that? I mean, that would be a pain to, you know, 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. You know. Can we do it a way that will be quicker? What do we do? Multiply Dan? Multiply across and add the frequency. Johnny. I always, I always remember. Johnny. <laughs> yes, multiply across. Exactly. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. The way to add up, um, the way to add up a bunch of 10s. Four, 16 tens is you just times them, huh? 10 times 16, 160. That's what 16 tens added up. You just multiply, huh? And what are four zeros? Well, same thing, four times zero, that's a zero. And 14 twenties, what's that? Uh, 280. And, and then three times 60, 180. And then add those up. What is that? 16, 22, 4, 620. Is that good? Just by multiplying, huh? And then what do we got to divide by? 620 divided by... Four. Yeah, how'd you come up with that? Good job. Yeah, you just add up the frequency because that's how many numbers, huh? And it is 40. Wait, how did you get the 620 Yeah, so I just said there's 10 16s, which is 160, oh, okay. 20, or actually 14 20s, which is 280, and 6 30s, which is 180, and 4 zeros, which is 0, and then add that all up to be 620. It's a tricky little way to add up all the numbers without having to do it all slow and painful-like. Is that good? And then divide by 40 because there are 40 numbers up there, right, which is the frequency, and that comes out 15.5. So there's the average of all that, those numbers in the table. So you don't have to write these out. You don't have to. But if you're having any trouble, it'll help. And it didn't take that long. Would it take me a minute? One minute, you know? All right, now, second part, how about the median? Can you get that median? Let me give you a minute to think about the median. This one's a little harder. Give me a second. Huh? What do you think? How do we find the median? Got to find the one or two in the middle, huh? Now, how do we do that? There's 40 numbers. 40 numbers. So is there going to be one in the middle or two in the middle? Because it's an even amount. There's two in the middle, right? Remember, even, even amount, there's always two. If we, had, if we only had four fingers, we would have two middle fingers, huh? Even amount always means two in the middle. Odd amount means one in the middle, right? So even amount, 40 numbers, is going to be two in the middle. So how do you find those two that are in the middle? Well, can't we just divide 40 by two? It's going to be right around number 20. 
the 20th number. Huh? So which one's that? Yeah, the first four numbers are zeros. The next 16 numbers are tens. That's 20 numbers. So the last 10 is the 20th number, isn't it? Does everybody see how I came up with that? I'm kind of confused. There's four zeros. Frequency is how many? There's four zeros and 16 tens. So 16 and 4, that's 20 numbers up to the last 10. The zeros and the tens must be 20 numbers. That must be the 20th number. So that's the 20th number. How many numbers, now is that in the middle? Real close. How many numbers are before the 20th number? Well, 19. How many numbers are after the 20th number? 20. So that's not quite the middle, huh? There's not the same amount on both sides. So you also have to circle this one, don't you? Those two, remember we said there'd be two in the middle? Those two together are in the middle. Why? How do we know? Well, how many below those two? 19, right? 19 numbers below those two. How many above those two? 19, because this is the 21st number. So there's 19 above it to 40, and 19 below the, uh, the other one. Those two are together the middle, aren't they? So I'm making sense how I found that? So then you, what do you do when you have two numbers in the middle for median? Yeah, average them, huh? So 10 plus 20 over 2 is 30, over 2 is 15. That's how we got 15, as the median of that data set. Am I going too fast? Is that making sense? Yeah. Questions I can answer? All right. So the table ones are important. They get people a lot. Okay. Yeah, in fact, let me just do it over here on a blank screen, and I'll get you the percentile formula. All right. So for figuring out um, to find... The, to find the pth percentile. To find the pth percentile in a data set. How do you find the pth percentile? Well, first, order low to high. First, well, first order the data low to high. So put it in order. Second. Second, um, multiply. So this is what you're going to want to put in your 3x5 card. This is one of the most important things, maybe the most, that you'll put on your 3x5 card for the next test. P over 100 times N. That equals L, which stands for locator. Locator. L's our locator. And then there's two possibilities. If L is a whole number, then average the two numbers in L and L plus first spots in the elf and L plus first spots. Maybe I could just say in the elf and next. How about that be easier? And next spots. B if L is a decimal round L up, even point 0.1 goes up. You know what we mean by up. Up means up. Even point, you know, even point 0.1, even 3.1 goes to 4, for example. You know, any, any kind of decimal goes up. Goes up. Um, and take the number in... that spot in the data. And this is in the data. Okay, you want to write all that down? And we'll talk about it.
All right. Uh, we'll, we'll use it a lot, and I'll keep referring back to it. So uh, let's give it a try. So, so first thing, oh, and um, let me say one other thing here. If they say um, first quartile, first quartile, if say you're watching a football game this weekend, and your friend asks you, hey, how far are you through the, first, uh, through the football game? And you said, we just ended the first quarter. The first quarter just ended. What percentage of the way are you through the football game? 25%. 25%. So that's P equals 25, right? At the end of the first quarter, you're 25% of the way through the game, right? What if you said, I just finished the third quarter? What percentage of the way are you through the football game? Into the third quarter? 75, huh? Does that make sense? So they're going to be using those terms a lot. They're going to be going, blah, 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 find the first quartile. They'll use that word. You think, oh, into the first quarter, you want me to put P equals 25 and do this thing with P equals 25. Does that make sense? P is the percentage of the way through. That's what that stands for. So when they say first quartile, we think, oh, 25% of the way through the game. P is 25. Let's say third quartile, into the third quarter, oh, 75% of the way through the game. Plug in P equals 75 and do this thing. That's what they're saying. All right, let's kind of set that aside. All right, let's go back. So see what they're saying here? First quartile. We think, oh, you mean you want me to do P is 25, right? They want us to do P is 25. Because at the end of the first quarter of a football game or basketball game, you're 25% of the way through the game. P is 25%. All right, so um, what do I do then? How do I find the P25 in that? And this is the data set right here. These are the numbers. One of those numbers is going to be the P25. We're trying to find which one. How do we do it? Well, what does it say on this table we do first? First, put the numbers in order from low to high. So let's do that. Let's put them in order. So what's the, uh, so here we go. Here's the order. What's the lowest number? Negative seven. Yeah, negative seven. Just kind of cross them off as you go. Negative seven is the lowest one. What's next? Negative four. And negative three. And then we'll be at three, four, um, six, and then like three sevens. Like that, I think. One, two, three, yeah. You know, if, um, if this was my test, and my test grade was on the line, I, I don't like to make small mistakes on tests. I always do things to double check. So um, I, would, I would, if my test grade was on the line, I wouldn't just do that and kind of like hope I didn't mess up. I know I make mistakes. So I would go back. If my test grade was on the line, I'd go, oh, I'm going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I probably didn't drop any. Just a good way to double check. All right, so I've got all nine of them. Um, now, there they are in order. Now, how do you find the P25? P25, which is first quartile, into the first quarter, 25% of the way through the football game. What do you do? You take P over 100 times N. What is N? What's N in all these formulas? So I need to take P over 100 times N. What's N in all these formulas? N is total number of numbers. N is always how many numbers are in your data set. So how many numbers are in this data set? Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine numbers in the data set. So P over 100 times N is going to be P, which we already said is 25, over 100 times 9. N is 9. Because there's nine numbers in the data set. That's going to come out to be 2.25. If you do that in your calculator, it'll come out to be 2.25. Everybody good so far? Am I racing ahead of you? Good so far? So whenever they asked us to find uh, a quartile, first quartile, we think P is 25, 25% of the way through the data set. But take P over 100 times N, 25 over 100 times N, it is 9 numbers, comes out. Use your calculator, 25 divided by 100 times 9, 2.25. Sneeze, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. 2.25. Okay, now, and then what do we do with that 2.25? Let's go back to the table. 
If you get a whole number, well, we didn't get a whole number. If you get a decimal, yeah, that's us. We got a decimal. What do you do with it? Round it up. Even 3.1 goes up to 4. They mean up, up, up. So 2.25, round up. So it comes out to be 3. 2.25, rounds up to 3. Now, here's the mistake tons of people make. They stop there and go, answer's 3. Let's read the table carefully. Round up and take that number. That number and you're done. That's all. No. Take the number in that spot in the data. Remember, that's a pointer. It's not the answer. That's a road sign. It's saying, go grab the third number. I'm not the answer. I'm telling you where to find the answer. So if it helps you, put a third on that. That way you'll remember, oh, it's a road sign. It's not, I'm not there yet. You right? You see the sign. You know, 50 miles to Bakersfield. I've arrived. I'm in Bakersfield. No, 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 no. The sign said 50 more miles to Bakersfield. Remember, that's a road sign. That's a road sign. So third number in the data set. What's the, here's the first. Here's the second. Here's the third. Negative three. After you line them up, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's got to, that's why putting them in order is so crucial. Yeah, not, yeah. It, yeah, it's got to be in order. Yeah. And does, it, and does it make sense, guys and gals? Does it look like that negative three right here is about one-fourth of the way, 25% of the way through that data set? Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Remember, that's what we're finding. I want to make sure you remember the, the big idea here is we're trying to, they're asking us, find the number about one-fourth of the way through the whole data set. Well, negative three. Negative three is about one-fourth of the way through the data set. Well, exactly one-fourth of the way through the data set. Mm-hmm. Want to try the part B? So you can find the third quartile. Third quartile. So part B. Third, we've already got the data set in order. That's nice. We don't have to do that again. Third quartile. What's P going to be for third quartile? P75, because at the end of the third quarter of a football game or basketball game, you're 75% of the way through the game. P75, plug into that formula. P over 100 times in. P over 100 times in. 75 over 100 times in. And what's in? In is still nine, huh? Nine, Nine numbers in our data set. Is it 6.75? Mm-hmm. 6. 6.75, I'll let you finish. 6.75. Give you a second, see if you can find the answer there. So what do we do with 6.75? We round it up to 7, but not 7, 7. Remember, it's a pointer. It's not the answer. The answer's not 7. It's saying, here's where you find the answer. It's a road sign. Go to the seventh number. What's that? First, second, third, fourth number, fifth number, sixth number, seventh number. So it turns out, luckily, the answer is seven. But careful, it's just because there happens to be a seven in the seventh spot. Right? The answer is seven. The seventh number is a seven, it turns out. That's a coincidence. That won't always happen. That'll rarely happen. Is that good? Part C, they, they just, it's more of the same. I'm going to move on because we've got a lot to cover. Questions before we move on? So P over 100 times in, have that on your 3 by 5 card. It'll be worth 1,000 points. All right, so let's, let's start with A here. So in A, we have the numbers 1 to 100. That's real convenient. And they want us to find the 75th percentile. Okay, we can do that. How do you find the 75th percentile? Well, P is 75. Plug into P over 100 times in, right? That's a a formula we keep using, P over 100 times in. So put in the 75 right there, 75 over 100 times in. For real? 
for real? <laughs> Are you thinking, well, the answer is just 75. Well, you've got to be a little careful. I know, I know, I know how you feel, but let's, let's go through the formalities. And then what's the n? What, remember what n is always? Oh, n is always the number of numbers in all these formulas. How many numbers 1 to 100? You're almost afraid to say now, huh? But it, it's just 100. It, it's, just, it's just 100, right? 1 to 100 is 100 numbers, right? Good to there, there? Multiply that in your calculator, you'll get 75. Right? We good? So what? So the answer is 75, right? Why, why are they saying 75.5? Is that a mistake? Odd number. Odd number? Well, I know earlier we talked about even, odd, all that kind of stuff. You're basically right. Um, you're basically right on that, Johnny. Let's, let's stick with this. It'll make it easier, but your thinking is correct. But it'll be easier for you just to follow this map. So let's be really careful about what these instructions say. So important to follow the instructions precisely, exactly. Right? I told you, when, did, I think I already told you the story, right, how I learned to make scones and I messed it up at first. The instruction said mix it lightly, and I just thought, more mixing's better, and I made them hard as rocks. My wife sweetly asked me, did you mix them lightly? And I'm like, no, why should I do that? More mixing's better. I, was, I thought I was smarter than the instructions. So let's don't be smarter. Let's, let's read them really carefully, really precisely. What does it say to you? What, what did we just get for L? What did we just get? Is that a whole number, or is that a decimal? That's a whole number. There's no, it's not 75.1 or something. That's 75 right on. Now, remember, in this last problem, this one, we kept getting decimals, 2.25, 6.75, remember? And so when you get a decimal, you always round it up, right? But that's not happening this time. This time, we got a smack dab whole number. What do you do when you get a whole number? If it's a whole number, that's a whole nother story. You don't round it up. What do you do? You average the two numbers, that spot and the next spot. That's what it says to do. If you get a whole number, you got to go there and the next spot, average them. Kind of like what you're saying, Johnny. It's odd amount. It's two numbers. Yeah. So that means average the 75th and 76th numbers. Do you see what those instructions are saying? Mix lightly. We better do what it says or we will not get happy scones, right? So 75th and 76th when you get a whole number. You ever seen the difference? You get a decimal, you round up, you just grab one number. You get a whole number, you go there and the next spot, average them. So, okay, well, what's that going to be? Well, 75th number, 75, 76, add them up, divide by 2, 75.5, which is right in the middle of 75 and 76, huh? 75.5, it's right in the middle of 75 and 76. That's how they got that answer. We good? Is that making sense? Want to try the 90th percentile? So try the 90th. We do it. So that's P is 90. P over 100 times N is 90 over 100 times N. N is 100, right? So that just comes out 90. But wait, what are we supposed to do when we get a whole number? Mix lightly. Let's do what it says. What does it say? You take the 90th and 91st, right? Whenever you get a whole number, you're grabbing two numbers, aren't you? If you get a decimal, you're rounding up and grabbing one number. See the difference? So we're grabbing two. So that's 90 and 91. Add them and divide by two. It's going to be 90.5 because it's right in the middle of 90 and 91. Hence the answer, 
We good? It's getting easier? Questions I can answer? Let's try Let's. I think B and C would, would be helpful. So let's do that. Even though we don't have forever, I think it will be helpful. And that clock's actually on now. Huh, weird. Um, okay, so let's try now B. B would be good. See what they did in part B? They changed the data set a little bit. How many numbers in the data set now in part B? 101. They added one number, didn't they? See, they have one more. They have a zero in the front. So now in number of numbers is 101. All right, so go ahead. Try part B. Find the 75th percentile. So do the P equals 75. P over 100 times N formula again. So P over 100 times N, so 75 over 100 times N. N's 101 now, right? So what do we get? 75.75? Uh, and what do you do when you get, this time we got a decimal. So want to be clear in the two cases, if you get a decimal, what do you do? Up it goes. Round it up. 70, so you grab the 76th number, right? So the answer is not 76. Remember, that's a road sign. It says go find the 76th number. Now, what's the 76th number? 75. 75. How do we know that? Well, it's, you go back and you look for the pattern. Let me show you. Let me, let me write these out more carefully. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, da, da, da. So the first number is 0. See what I mean by the pattern? Second number is 1. Third number is 2. See the pattern? The order, take away 1, gives you the number, doesn't it? 3, take away 1 is 2. 2, take away 1 is 1. 1, take away 1 is 0. See how that works? See how the order, so we want to find the 76th. So if you want to find the 76th, what will be here? 75. See that pattern? The number in the spot is always one lower than the spot number in this data set. Now, that's not, don't memorize that as like something that's always going to be the case. Uh uh. You just got to be able to do that on the fly. That's called mathematical skill right there. That's really what we're going for is the ability to write a pattern, see a pattern, predict a pattern, describe a pattern. That right there is mathematical thinking. That's the heartbeat of mathematical thinking. Being able to answer a question like that without a formula. Just be able to get in there and go, huh, what's the pattern? And logically follow the pattern. You see that? That's valuable for life. All kinds of things in life have patterns. That, that, that's what math is about. That's the heartbeat of math. It's the science and the ability to, to do pattern work. So did everybody see how I did that? I said first number, second number, third number. What's the pattern? It's always one lower, huh? So 76, 75. The 76 number must be the number 75, according to the pattern. Good? Are we happy? No? Not happy? Yes, some are happy. Because you give me a little bit of the poker face. I can't read you. Are we good? You want things I can say more about that? Is that, is that good? Want to try, um, how about, and then we can do the 90th, but it's the same thing. How about, um, how about we go down to part C? Let's do part C. That's okay. Um, I'll do a fresh screen here again. That's okay. And we'll do part C. Let's find the 70. So let's do data set C now. And find the 70. How many, um, how many numbers? Now in C, they, they took out the zero. They took out the 100. So there's just 99 numbers now, huh? In data set C, we have 99 numbers. Can you find the 75th percentile there? Same formula. P over 100 times N. over 100 times in. And so that's 75 over 100 times in. In is 99 numbers this time. And I'm getting 74.25. I'll let you handle it from there.
How are we doing? What do you do with everybody good so far? Right? 99 numbers, 74.25. What do I do with the decimal? Round it up. 75th number. So what's the 75th number? Well, let's look at the pattern. The numbers go 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So the first number's 1, the second number's 2, the third number's 3, the fourth number's 4. What's the pattern between? And I want to find the 75th number. What's it going to be? According to the pattern, it's just the same. See how these are just the same every time? It is 75. It is 75. Is that good? Good on these? I'm looking for happiness. I'm not sure I'm seeing happiness. I'm like, more like, a, okay. All right. We'll move. So we have one other section I want to get to. So, um, okay. So basically, you know the deal. They're, they're saying median. Oh, yeah. A median. Median. If, I, if somebody said, hey, I'm watching a football game, basketball game. I'm halfway through. Median. Median's middle, huh? Median's middle. I'm halfway through. So what percentage of the game is over if you're halfway through? 50%. Yeah, median is just P50. Does that make sense? You're in the middle. You're halfway through the game. So I know, I know a minute ago we did median another way. But from now on, guys and gals, let's just do median with P50. That'll be easier. Let's use the same formula. You could just do median with P50 from now on. Because that's the middle, right? 50% of the way through the game. So first quartile, P25. Median, P50. Third quartile, P75. So median's P50. So then you just do the same old formula. P over 100 times in. Give it a go. What's in? What's the number of numbers? Well, it's right here. It's that 1,452,803 college-bound students, seniors. So we get 50 over 100 times in. What's in? It's that gigantic number, 1,452,803. And I'm getting, when I do that, I get 726,401.5. Good. So there so far? 726,401.5. What do we do with that decimal? Round up. Round up. Always round up decimals. Round up, 726,402. There it is. That good? Now, normally that's a pointer. We say go find the number in that spot, but, but, but that, they're only asking for the position, the pointer. So that's all they want on this one. I don't know what the data, I don't know what their scores were on the, whatever it is, the test, the aptitude test. I'm just saying that is the pointer. That's the position of the median. That person's in the middle. That person's completely average. Is that good? We good on that question?